Okay. Welcome to my channel, the Fashionista Professor channel. So recently I had the opportunity to go visit my son who is a doctoral student at Harvard. So I took a time to go visit him uh, during my spring break at the university. And you know the visit was quite a lot of fun. He took me around Boston and I also had the opportunity go ahead and visit the Harvard College Observatory and uh, Dr. Mercedes Morales showed us the great refractor telescope and um, we also went to the Harvard's mission, uh, solar physics mission location. So enjoy the vlog and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, we have much better telescopes.
30. <laughs> 0.4 nanometers. So, so which one is helium? The red one? The top left, yeah. yeah. It's a certain height in the atmosphere. So uh huh. I guess we said it's you want No, no, I mean, honestly, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, what happens to the board? What happens to it? Yeah, what, uh, I mean, what causes them to be projected there? Well, so, so this is data coming directly from space. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, in four different filters. And okay. So, I don't remember what the time delay is. Is it, is it just a minute? So 12 seconds between each image. Yeah, so it is 12 oh, seconds. Maybe the delay between. Well, so, so, so it's, it's basically in real time with a difference of 12 this seconds? Is a, this is a video, so it's looping back and forth. Okay. So this is from March 6th, so it's two days ago. I don't oh. know what the time delay is. I mean, there, there are continual downlinks. Okay. And geostationary orbit, so it's spread over the, the satellite. Is taking this data. Mm -hmm. It's high enough in its mm -hmm. orbit, so it stays mm -hmm. over the same part of Earth. Uh -huh. So it can always send this data down, telemetry is data down to the ground station. Okay. Uh, she asked me. Mercedes asked me, "What's the time delay?" I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. what's the time delay yeah, between mm -hmm. when the data is yeah. taken and when it's all mm -hmm. packets so, are transmitted down. So this is how the sun looked like two days ago. Oh. Yeah, you know, one of the things that they do is they check things like this. That's, that's like the idea. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Those are strong fields. magnetic fields, oh. and that's. Oh, what is moon. that? That's the moon oh. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool, right? Oh my goodness, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute, I thought it was somebody touching it. It's so like Mercedes said that <laughs> we're measuring those four images in different colors. Uh -huh. Light and ultra ultraviolet light, that's created at the sun. Uh -huh. It's coming towards Earth. It's passing through some filters. So uh -huh. it only lets certain colors through uh -huh. and detectors detect it. So uh -huh. the moon went through and back and forth. Uh -huh. The moon's opaque for those uh -huh. wavelengths. So it, it, as you saw, the moon was a solid dark disk. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah. Well, cool. As solar physicists uh -huh. and stellar physicists, we learn a lot about objects that are very far away uh -huh. by the light that is created. Uh -huh. It gives us information about the type of chemicals are present, the uh -huh. elements. Mm -hmm. The temperatures of the material that's making the light, mm -hmm. the speed, the velocity, the direction of the plasma that's moving. Mm -hmm. And you just missed it actually, there's a eruption that just happened yeah. in the middle. Oh, wow. Yeah, right there, it yeah. So, stars are big hot balls of gas. Uh -huh. So hot that the electrons that are normally bound to the individual atoms can uh -huh. be free to move around. Uh -huh. We call this a plasma, so uh -huh. the ions. Uh -huh. Because it's charged, material, it generates magnetic fields, uh -huh. and there are different scales for these magnetic fields and different time scales for the evolution of the different size fields. Uh -huh. Did that just do a re repeat? Yeah, it just yeah, moves back. Exactly. Okay. So what you'll see it towards the top and uh -huh. the bottom, you'll see these streams of light or material strands uh -huh. going out north and south. Uh -huh. Those, that's the larger scale, dipolar, so two, two directions, magnetic field. Uh -huh. And the smaller scales, which is what's captivating me right now. So the larger of the smaller scales are mm -hmm. near of magnetic fields, which is one's emerging right there, a group mm -hmm. of magnetic fields that's emerging in the surface of that the sun, the atmosphere. Wow. And because particles that have a net charge, mm -hmm. when they when they see a magnetic field or they're around a certain strength magnetic field, they stay confined to that magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing brighter emission from these loops, mm -hmm. which are magnetic fields, mm -hmm. because the plasma is stuck to the, to the mm -hmm. loops. So they cool, they, they lose their energy mm -hmm. by radiation. Mm -hmm. and mention it again, you gotta catch it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, wow! So, so the moon passes over the sun? From the position of the satellite, the, the light, when it's, when it's looking at the sun, there are times when the moon is uh -huh. within its field of view, and uh -huh. that's what you just saw. Oh. So you're a postdoc in physics or astronomy? I'm a postdoc here at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and Astrophysics. Oh, good. I work on many things. Uh, my main focus, I like stars, but my main focus right now is the sun because it's the closest star to us. Uh -huh. We have cool data, uh -huh. images that look like this that you really can't get from stars right now. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Yep. Wow. <laughs> wow, it's so good to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. Uh, what's your name again? My name is Chris Moore. Okay, Chris Moore, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to meet you too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I work on the science, trying to understand the atmospheric properties of our sun, mm -hmm. of our star of the sun, mm -hmm. and also new instruments, mm -hmm. ways we can get better data, like mm -hmm. higher time cadence, better mm -hmm. spectral resolution, 
things of that nature. And so what do you use the data for? So one big question is, if you look right now, uh -huh. there's a straw magnetic fields in the center, uh -huh. and towards the end, the periphery, the edges uh -huh. of the magnetic fields, uh -huh. we call those active regions, uh -huh. because they make eruptions, they're very active. Uh -huh. But around it, it's kind of dark. Uh -huh. So think, we're not really sure exactly why that's happening. Uh -huh. Number one. Number two, if you see, there's all these small features uh -huh. across the sun. Uh -huh. Those are smaller scale magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. They change their orientation on the time scales mm -hmm. of minutes, seconds, mm -hmm. and even less than a second. Mm -hmm. And if you look further, you see all these little brightenings that happen across the sun. Every mm -hmm. Those are small transients that we feel like mm -hmm. generate energy to heat the overall structure, the overall global structure of the sun. Mm -hmm. We don't really understand how that, all these work, mm -hmm. but they do work unison to a certain extent, I mean, they all in interplay and feedback on each themselves. So you really can look at one aspect in isolation. Mm -hmm. So all this is very complicated, but we're, as scientists, we're trying to better understand the universe. Mm -hmm. And the sun, which is the closest star to us, we can understand more about it. It helps mm -hmm. us better understand other stars in the universe. Okay. Which in turn will help us understand planets too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yep. Understanding the stars that the planets over around is very useful for the stuff Mercedes and I do. Okay, okay, that's very good. Thank you. Wait, I was going to say, oh wait, is Cinder going forward with all the plates? No, that's not right there. Is that going to be like that? That's easy. See, if you're going to forward, used to be the opposite of people. Oh, really? No, tell me more. The dad had a test. That wasn't just a test. But it was like a seal in the end. And then like, each project was in a little piece of the test. And then he was sitting one side oh, and one side and one side. I did hear about that. So the test. Somebody took, took that, right? The test, yeah, they gave it away to, like, to somebody. Right. So supposedly it's still around here. But we don't know where. <laughs> but they have some photo of the test in that room. She and must say hi. <laughs> this is a very neat room. Okay, so